Hi everybody, Matt Lawton here, and this is the Astrological Winds channel. I'm going to take a look at the Astrological Weather Report for the week of September 5th through the 11th. And there's two big events for that for this week that probably get through relatively quick actually. Um, one is Mercury going retrograde and the other is we have a full moon in Pisces at 18 degrees. Um, so quickly now, just a few of the basics for people who don't get through to the end. Um, the Astrological Winds channel is a free service available on YouTube. Um, so if you have a YouTube account, you can become a follower and then turn on your notifications and you'll always know when the um, blog comes up. It's also available on all kinds of podcasts and um, the best thing to do is just go to your favorite podcast and look up Astrological Winds Channel and I know it's on Spotify, um, Reveal, Apple iPodcasts, so it goes out through Buzzsprout, there's a bunch of them that pick it up. Um, like I said, right now under the current format, it's usually just me talking to the camera, so there's really no need to actually see the video. Um, so if you're, you know, have a time where you're like doing something where you do your podcast, like driving or jogging or walking, and that's what you do, you can always tune in on a podcast too. Also, um, I do post the link on Instagram. And I do put some extra stuff on Instagram each week just as comments. So if you have an Instagram account, just become an Astrological Winds Channel follower on that too. And I do post it on Facebook too, although my Facebook account is private. Um, so you have to friend me first with a friend request. And it's Matthew with two T's. Lawton, L-A-U-T-E-N. Oh, so remember, this is a full service, a free service, I should say. Um, and what I'd like for you to do to repay me would be to just pass the link on to somebody else that you know who might even be interested in it. You know, I know, you know, a lot of people check it out and they don't become followers, but that's fine. I'd like, you know, I'm getting a lot of good responses from people who do find it and like it a lot. So that is the best way you guys can help me. <clears throat> of course, if you'd like to give a donation, which some people do at times, you're more than welcome to do that. And my Venmo is, uh, my handle is at, the symbol at, and then Matthew, once again, full name, M-A-T-T-H-E-W, hyphen in the middle, and then L-A-U, T E N. So that's, uh, you can always look me up on Venmo and, um, and do that. Um, also, the best way that you can support me also is I've been a professional astrologer for over 20 years. And um, people have like just great mind opening and personal growth experiences by getting their charts done. Um, so if you ever need a reading of any type, please get in touch with me. Best way to do that is through my email. That's M-A-T-T-H-U-E-823 at gmail.com. And I'll say it one more time. M-A-T-T-H-U-E at gmail.com. Now remember, when we're listening to the blog, if we don't know astrology well, we're not getting lost, getting stuck on the astrological terms that we're going to focus on what the interpretation is so that you are just aware of what the energy is this week and you can work with that. It doesn't mean you don't need to know why and you don't need to get yourself lost trying to figure that, you know, out what I'm saying. So focus on what I'm saying in between those terms and what that actually means. And, and um, the other thing is to remember, everyone's going to experience these energies differently. That's where our free will comes in. And also our charts. You know, when I give this weather report each week, it's only what's going on 
in a general way across all of Earth, but we each have our own individual chart being affected in our own way. And that's why it's good to get a reading every year to know how it's affecting what energies each year are affecting your chart because you know you're gonna get some hits but you're gonna experience it you know everyone experiences this stuff differently it's not like some generic energy comes in and that's fateful and makes all of us like you know react the same way or something that's not the way it works whatsoever you know so there's a sometimes I think a little bit of a misunderstanding there with some of this stuff this is only part of the picture is my point it's a, at best half of it for you and and the other half is how your chart is interacting each week with the planets and where they are at this week so um before the big the big events the mercury retrograde and the full moon are both next weekend so i want to like just touch on two smaller things that are happening earlier in the week. The first one is one of our main asteroids, which is Pallas, Athene, um, the energy of sisterly or, or sibling kind of energy that is very intellectually you know, driven and into a lot of its own ideals and stuff is going into the sign of cancer actually on Monday. And so, so that's kind of interesting because it's not really where Pallas is normally at. And, and I think what may be happening here is because of the circumstances that are going on in the world and the actual threat to a lot of people's resources and security that's going on right now because of various factors in the economy, mainly and things like that, that Palace's energy is realizing, hey, you know, like right now, the best thing I can focus on is creating like a secure baseline for the physical needs of the people that I care about. So I think that's what she's really gonna be up to this week. I think she, or well, not just this week, for the next few weeks while she's in um, cancer, is she's you're kind of almost like taking a step back. Like I said, you know, in the monthly last week, September is going to be a month of like taking steps back. And there's a lot of like energies that are, you know, showing that, that this is the time and, and it's the season of it. And to resist that is really just a frustrating thing. But, um, for the most part, but I think, you know, for the most part, that's what she's going to be interested in doing is creating this baseline to make sure that the people she cares about are getting their needs met because like right now it's hard to like focus on like your ideals if like the physical things around you are not stable um Wednesday is an interesting day for the sun. It's going to Quincunx Chiron and it's also trining the north node on the same day. And to me this shows it's like a really excellent time basically to, you know, adjust and adapt to the circumstances that are going on around us right now. That And that is going to require letting go of certain attitudes and beliefs and paths, possibly, that we've been on, possibly for a long time even, where we just need to, you know, adjust to what the current situation is. Otherwise, we're just kind of like holding on and, and, and we're kind of like just hurting ourselves. We're dragging ourselves back. And it shows that with the trying to the North Node, by doing this, it's opening up pathways or doorways into what is more your dharmic, um, answer in the, in the sense of where you're really supposed to be going in this life on all kinds of levels. So it has the promise of, you know, increasing and giving us a lot of gifts and things that we value and, and it's pulling us towards that. Um, we can also end up connecting with a lot of new groups or associating with new people that are like more in, aligned with the things that we're kind of interested in and where we're wanting to go now. But, but that Sun Chiron is like saying, hey, once again, take a step back. What's your attitude? What's your belief system? 
what path are you on that right now may be like off kilter with where you're really needing to be where you're being called to go to and 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 once you drop some of those attitudes then you know we you can align more harmoniously that trine with the north node with what your path is supposed to be um okay so the main events um and i talked about the mercury retrograde already last week and um and so um but i'll get into it a little bit more so mercury is going retrograde on friday um, it will be at nine degrees Libra when it turns around and it's locked into that opposition to Jupiter retrograde that I mentioned briefly last week. And I also mentioned on the Instagram during the week too. Um, and it's also trining Mars in Gemini, um, as it, as so, um, it's also trining. So Mars is actually in the sign that that Mercury rules. So it's going to slow down Mars too, is what that means. You know, it's kind of, they have an interesting relationship going on this fall. And I'll get a little bit more into that in a minute or two. Um, so it is triggering that nice Mars Jupiter sextile from last week. And I think really when you look at the overall picture of this, the retrograde Mercury opposite the retrograde Jupiter, I think you're looking at a thing where a lot of the big ideas we have right now, the big visions that we have right now, we have to take a step or two back again and really be clear in our decision making processes that we have all the information we need, that our communications are being understood. And and I think we may find out during the Mercury retrograde period that they're not, you know, I mean, Mercury is turning retro in Libra, you know, one of the signs of communication and air signs. So one of the main things this Mercury retrograde is going to be off on is communications, especially the first couple weeks of it. Well, it's in the Libra part. It is going to backtrack into Virgo on the 23rd of September, and then things will shift a little bit. But I think there's going to be a lot of miscommunications and misunderstandings. Um, partnerships in particular could be, you know, a situation where, you know, we find a lot of this going on. So it's really good time to double check on your communications be understood and clear with one another and also a good time to make sure the information you're getting is not you know something that's just like this energy that's pleasing to you on a superficial level and you're not really looking at it deeper and the mercury jupiter you know does give us this wide tolerant viewpoint, especially with the Libra there too, but at the same time, you know, it's not really taking care, like I said last week, of a lot of the details that need to be taken care of. And, and so we have a really interesting three week period, I think, while this Mercury retro is going on to make sure all these communications and this information that we're getting is correct. Now, that's when I think the Virgo part will help. When the Mer when Mercury slips back into Virgo on the 23rd of September, that'll be a time when we'll be able to really internalize and get the work done on spelling out details much better and and really looking at it with a critical eye and being able to say, okay, these are the things that need to be done. And then at that point, like the Mars and Gemini can be more helpful too. I think it can be like, okay, let me like act on this stuff. But it's really interesting what continues to happen because then on the first or second, depending on what time zone you're in, um, Mercury is gonna go direct 
and of October this is, and 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 so we'll start to feel the energy turn around, and that will be at 24 degrees Virgo at that point, and then we'll have 10 days again of Mercury. And remember, when Mercury's in Virgo, it's super strong, it's exalted, and in rulership. So it's what the mind is working at this incredibly ingenious way of like knowing all the details almost like the mind being like a, com a a really good computer like just taking care of all the little details and making it all add up to the sum total that it needs to go to so so we're gonna have like that for another 10 days afterwards it'll be till october 10th that Mercury will be will remain in Virgo, and of course, still kind of in a shadowy period too, coming out of the retro, and then eventually we'll go back into Libra at that point, and once it's in Libra, we'll stay in Libra pretty much for the rest of the month. Now, what's really interesting, like I said, Mars and, and Mercury are doing an interesting dance this fall, on the 29th of October is when Mercury will go into Scorpio and finally leave the Libra waters behind. And that is the day that the ruler of Scorpio, Mars, goes retrograde. So it's going to be a very, so to me, it's like, it's almost like Mercury is going to be sucked right back into, in an indirect way, into a retrograde period with Mars, which is a very long period. And, uh, you know, talk about that more next month. But um, so the other thing about this full moon is, you know, so, so let's, I mean, I mean about this Mercury retrograde is that, you know, it's, it's just going to be those normal things that you'll always have to remember about Mercury retrograde. If you're going to start new projects, then don't expect the results to be the ones you're, you expect going in, which can be fine as long as you have that attitude. But if you're like expecting a certain result, and you start things during the Mercury retrograde period, you're gonna get a different result. You know, it really, you know, depends, you know, on your attitude a lot, um, you know, but I, you know, but really most people, for most people, the best thing to do is to just to work on the things that you've already started through this period and really work on those details. Um, so communication breakdowns, travel slowdowns, um, things like that. The travel slowdowns may have, have to do with, you know, storms with wind, possibly, things like that. All right, then comes Saturday's full moon at 18 degrees Pisces, tightly sextile Uranus, and going and widely conjunct the co-ruler of Pisces, um, um, Neptune, and so ruled by Jupiter, which is in that opposition to Mercury, and also in a quincunx to Venus and a sesi quadrate to Ceres. So, very, very interesting full moon. Um, first of all, the full moon in Pisces, you know, what is that you know, really looking for? Remember, a full moon's an opposition, so there's this tense energy during a full moon, and it's energy that's in a, externalized, it's seen, it's out under the full lights to be seen. So, so the, you know, the opposition going on that we're feeling within us and we'll see manifesting in other people and their decisions and just what's going on in the world in general is that here, you know, on the moon, remember the moon is always operating on a, mainly a subconscious or unconscious level, okay? So the moon in Pisces is actually pretty comfortable you know, it, it wants to dissolve boundaries. It wants to have an, a connection with others, emotionally, spiritually, or with anything that it's around, you know? There's this unification energy that runs behind Pisces. It, 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 and so 
the moon's about our emotions and security and that's how we are seeking out our security when the moon is in Pisces. We want to somehow unify with anything that we're emotionally processing or going through. And we may be very unaware of this. That's, the, you know, we may see other people doing it more clearly than the way we're doing it because it's the moon, it's hidden from us. But like during the full moon, we may get a chance to see some of this stuff operating on how we're seeking this like desire to be at one with whatever we're doing, the environment we're in, the people we're around, there's like this energy of unification going on. Now the danger with the Pisces moon is that we can easily lose ourselves and that the sensitivity is very high to what is coming into us, very receptive during a Pisces moon. So other people around us, other beings around us, the environment we're in, all are going to, we're going to unify with. And it can be very confusing at times because it can make you lose your clarity of where you end and the next thing or being or person begins. So it can have like this very almost like disorienting energy at times because of the oversensitivity. And there is a need to have like an escape hatch in the sense of a place where you can be quiet and alone and in a calmer place where you're not having to input so much of that stuff so you can still be clear on who you are and what your ideals are. So a very interesting energy. So in the meantime, the opposite part, the sun in Virgo is, you know, senses this like, the Pisces moon taking the stuff too far and is like the demanding critic or judge of like saying, hey, you know, it's really fine to have all this like energy and this idealism and 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 what you and dreams and all this that you're that the Pisces moon represents, but like what are you doing with it? Like, you know, it's like are you like making it useful? Is it becoming a tool somehow that you can perfect and bring down into some practical use on planet Earth in your physical life? So there's, you know, so there's this very, like, you know, that, that, that Virgo discernment at this point is what can pull, you know, that Pisces moon back from like floating off too far because it, when it floats off too far then like escapism and victimhood become two ugly heads that can rear out of that Pisces energy you know I mean we're very interested in spiritual journeys and artistic inspiration and things that are abstract with that Pisces moon, but if we take it too far, once again, we can start to lose ourselves. So the Virgo sun's like, hey, you know, it's time to like, you know, get down to some business on this and really look into this before we go any further. So very interesting. And then the sextile to Uranus shows that opportunities are going to come to us through the circumstances that we're in and through people that we're around. And they're gonna be very stimulating and exciting opportunities that come to us and, and, and that can really have our life take a turn that can be very, very exciting and fill into some of that Pisces moon promise of like ideals being met and dreams coming true and unification type energy with things that you really desire 
than that you see as good type things for you. So very interesting on that sextile. And then the moon conjuncting Neptune eventually, and it's a wide conjunction, folks. So like, you know, I know they go, oh, you're going to hear a lot of people talking about, oh, it's conjunct Neptune, but it's wide. So it's like that Uranus thing is a lot tighter. They all the, the, the moon Neptune do, is doing too is backing up the moon Pisces part anyway. Like I said, it's kind of like the Co I don't really like to call it co-ruler, but Neptune has an affinity with Pisces. So it's going to just back up a lot of that energy where we're kind of like a psychic vacuum of like the environment and the people we're around. And we have to be really, really careful about putting certain people, ideas, ideals on a pedestal that are not real. Um, and being very aware of the type of energy that other people are bringing in around us. There's going to be some very helpful people, but there's going to be people that are kind of like playing the victim role or maybe like are playing like, like almost like an escape hatch for reality for you. So very interesting. And then the, the other thing to once again remember too. So here we got Jupiter, the co-ruler, or really the ruler of the full moon, and it's retrograde just like Mercury is and just like all the other outer planets are. So I think once again, whatever happens during this full moon, and, it, and it's probably going to be some interesting stuff for you. It's, it's on a delayed reaction kind of thing. You know, it's, it's kind of showing you, Hey, there's opportunities out there to meet these ideals and, you know, to, to like have like, you know, changes come into your life that steer you into a more idealistic life path. And, but like, it's not going to happen right away with all this retrograde energy and what seems to maybe even be inner confusion for people. Things have to be like sorted out still. So there's like a lot of this revise review, re-looking at things and, and using the Virgo energy and the Mercury detail energy to really go through things with a fine comb so that your vision, your wider vision, the Mercury-Jupiter opposition, the Pisces energy, the Neptune energy can all be met in reality and not just be some fantasy that never comes into reality. So a very interesting full moon. Um, I don't, you know, I think it's going to have some significant events for all of us, but they're going to require more processing and then more working, especially internally or in the environment that we have some control or authority over before we can bring that stuff all out into the regular world. And, you know, we have a lot of retro stuff still going on for a while, including Mars, like I said, going retro eventually too. So interesting full moon and, I, and, and it should be exciting to see what these changes that come in, you know? And I mean, even that Uranus thing is saying, hey, you know, that's appealing to the Virgo sun part. It's like we can use like the brilliance of like the tools, technology, the, the science and information that we have now and really apply it in detail. But we have to do this stuff for ourselves and in our sphere of influence first before we can bring it out. All right, this is Matt Lawton. This is the Astrological Winds Channel. It is a free service that is available on YouTube every week. If you have a YouTube account, please become a follower and turn on your notifications and you will be notified when it's on. I do social media people still too, some of you. And if any of you don't want to be social, you know, if I, if media, if I, um, 
I'm sending you the link and you don't need to be reminded of the link or you don't want, don't, you know, just let me know. It's not, not an issue because it's actually helpful. If I know people are following, I don't need the notification. I've got my YouTube notification on. It's all good. Um, it's also available on all kinds of podcasts. Like I said before, no reason to see my face. Um, eventually I want to, you know, up the blog and maybe we get a more video involved and stuff. But right now, it's just me talking to the camera, an occasional picture of a chart. I know people are a lot more free when they can just be audio stimulated and not have to have their eyes on something. So like, you know, I'm taking a walk, walking the dog, driving around. You can have it on podcasts. So just look it up. Astrological Winds Channel on your favorite podcast. I know that it's definitely on Spotify and some of the other popular ones goes out through Buzzsprout. They let me know each week how many people are what are downloading it there. So, um, and it's also, if you need to be reminded of the link and you have an Instagram account, I do Astrological Winds channel. I put the link up there. I also do some extra commentary usually every week on Instagram only, and it's only a few sentences. It's not video or audio. So that's always a little bit of fun stuff you can add to certain days that are very like common complex. I'll sometimes talk about some of the stuff going on. And then um, also Facebook, I put the post on, although my Facebook account is private. It's Matthew, M-A-T-T-H-E-W, Lawton, L-A-U-T-E-N. Um, so it's a free service. Please, please, please. We're almost done. As soon as we're done, please find someone in your contacts to pass the link on to for me. Really appreciate that. If you want to give a donation, that's fine too. Then my handle is at capital M and A T T H E W hyphen in the middle, capital L L A U T E N. And um, you're more than welcome. Any amount is fine. There's no amount too small. And I appreciate anyone who does send a donation. Um, best way that you can um, support me also is I've been a professional astrologer for over 20 years. Um, life, you know, people get readings and it's life changing moments for them. You really should know the energy in your chart. It's always with you. Um, and then also I highly recommend getting a predictive reading every year if you're into astrology, because it's good to know how these events are directly affecting your chart too. Um, but I also do relationship charts, children's charts. I do um, elections for people that that's a popular service trying to find the right time or the best time to make a big decision and start something because it impregnates that whole process with that moment. So you really want to turn that as much in your favor as possible. Um, fixed star readings for people who are really looking into deep soul purpose on spiritual levels. Um, horror, simple horror questions. If you have a question that you've been burning about trying to make a decision, can't seem to figure out what to do. It's really emotionally charged. A lot of times we can get an answer out of a chart. And then specific stuff too. You know, people you know might have specific things going on that they'd like to get an astrological perspective on. I'm available for all that stuff. And the best way to get in touch with me once more is through my email. And that is M-A-T-T-H-U-E-823 at gmail.com, M-A-T-T-H-U-E-823 at gmail.com. Also have classes available, beginner's classes, $25 a piece, $20 for students. They're available on Dropbox, so you can just uh, contact me about them. If you need an astrologer for an event, mini readings, lectures, things like that, also another thing you can contact me about. All right, until next week when we will be into Mercury retrograde, joining all those other retrograde planets. I will see you all, and this will be an interesting um, full moon for us next weekend.